All right, hello everyone. Welcome to these wonderful math videos, Math with Miss Lasley. Yeah. Okay, so um, today we are going to be looking at arithmetic sequences. We're going to define what they are. We're going to look at recursive equations, explicit equations, and then we're going to do some examples. So here we go. Okay. So first off, we need to talk about what is an arithmetic sequence, all right? Um, so arithmetic is a sequence when you are adding the same number every time. Think arithmetic, basic adding and subtracting. So arithmetic sequences, this is when you add, all right, so sequence where you add the same number repeatedly repeatedly I'm not sure if that's how you spell that word <laughs> repeatedly I guess okay to get to get consecutive terms all right, um, let me move my head. Doo, doo, doo. There we go. Now my head's floating around the bottom. Okay, so that number that's being added is called the common difference, um, and we use the letter D to denote the common difference. All right, so the number, all right, so uh, the number being added is called the common difference. And we use lowercase d in our equations to represent the common difference. So common difference, lowercase d. That's important stuff. All right, so for instance, an example, Two, four, six, eight, ten, dot, 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 dot. All right. To go from two to four, we added two. To go from four to six, we added two. Eight, six to eight, add two. Eight to ten, add two. So we are adding the same number every time, and the number we're adding is what we call our common difference. This is an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of two. There we go. So nothing too crazy. All right, now when we're expressing our arithmetic sequences, there are two different techniques, so two different equations that we can make. Um, we have the recursive equation, which we talked a little bit about um, when we were going over the homework from last class that you guys kind of saw with your um, your last two problems on the homework, those were recursive equations, and that's when we're making an equation using the previous term to get the next term. All right, so this doesn't specifically have to do with an arithmetic sequence, this is just in general, a recursive equation is an equation where you're using a previous term to get the next term. All right, so um, an equation that uses a previous term to find the next term. All right, now for, uh, for arithmetic sequences, there is a general setup for making these recursive equations, and it looks like this. So you would have something like a sub n equals, all right, and it's um, <coughs> a sub n minus 1 plus d, all right, and what this is, this says to find term number n, so to find a sub n, you take a n minus 1, that's the previous term, and you add d, which is your common difference. Right?
right? So for that example that we had up there where we were doing two, four, six, eight, ten, what we would do to make our um, recursive equation is, hold on, let me move. Let me put an extra, there we go. Give me a little bit of space. All right, so for our example, right, if we're using that same sequence above, two, four, six, eight, ten, to make a, uh, a recursive equation, we would say a sub n equals a n minus 1, so we just put a n minus 1, plus our common difference, which is 2. All right, and they would need to give you, like, for instance, like I did on the homework, they would need to give you, like, the first term. All right, so they would need to give you, like, if you were trying to fill this in, you would need, like, a sub 1, and for this problem, it would be a sub 1 equals 2. So with that first term, you can then find the second term, which then lets you find the third term, and then the fourth term, and so on. All right, so uh, just a little bit. So a sub n is the term you want to find, term you want to find. Whereas a sub n minus 1, like we said, this is the previous term. Okay. Yeah, so that is recursive equations. All right. We don't use them very much, but they uh, do come up sometimes, and that's kind of how they look. So I think on your homework tonight, I don't think I did any recursive equations. I might have. There might be one, but I think I kind of stayed away from it. All right, so now we've got to move this down a little bit because we moved that first one down. Just keep going. There we go. That's probably enough room. All right, now the one that we do spend the most amount of time on is a, something called an explicit equation, and um, that allows you to find the term you're looking for only using the term number itself. So you don't need to know previous numbers. You don't need to know what the first term is. You don't need to know the second term. All you need is the term number that you're looking for and you can find out what it is. All right, so that's what's, so these ones are definitely the ones we're gonna spend the most amount of time on um, because they're, they're easier to work with. All right, hold on, I'm just trying to make sure I'm on the right scroll page. There we go. Okay, so explicit equation. All right, all right so, uh, All right, oh, that's right. I was like, what am I doing? All right, all, uh, nope, not all. That's a weird way to start a sentence. Uh, this is an equation where you use the term number to find the value of that term. All right, uh, so you use the term number to find the value of the term that you want. All right, um, and just like with the recursive equation, there's a generic equation that we're going to be using to um, make our explicit equations, and that looks like this. So a sub n equals a sub 1, so the first term plus the common difference times n minus 1. All right, so just kind of going through this one, a sub n, this is the term you want, right? Just a sub n, right, the term you want of your sequence. That's what you would plug in for n. a1 is your first term. d is your common difference. And then n, right, this is going to be like the term number that you're trying to find, right? This is the term number you want to find. All right, um, so that's kind of the generic setup for these ones. All right, now what you can do because, so this is like a, a textbook would give you this as like the equation. Um, and I mean, it's fine, but 
you can also like do a little bit of simplification if you want to and I'll show you what I mean when we get into it so like this is a nice formatting but once you have numbers to plug in we do want to simplify it all the way and like I said we're gonna do an example so I can show you all right so we're gonna use that I need to move this down that wasn't enough room all right, so I'm going to, like I said, move that down, and then we're going to do that same problem from before. So the 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 problem, we're going to do that one um, using our explicit equation. So example. All right, so we would do a sub n equals. All right, now we want a1, which is our first term. So for 2, 4, 6, 8, 2 is our first term. All right, plus the common difference and we said that the common difference for 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 was 2. So we plug a 2 in for D, and then we have N minus 1. All right, so that is plugging in our A sub 1, our first term, right? So this right here, this is A sub 1. This is D, our common difference. All right, and then we have the N minus 1. So what we want to do is we, want, we don't want to leave it like this. We want to simplify. All right, if you leave your problem like this, I will probably take off a point, all right, because it's not that hard to kind of simplify this so that you've combined like terms, and this is what I mean by that. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna distribute the two. All right, so then we get a sub n equals two plus two n minus two. And then we're gonna combine our like terms. So a sub n equals two n, and then 2 minus 2 goes away. So the actual explicit equation for 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, dot, 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 is 2n. a sub n equals 2n. All right, so if you wanted to find, say, the first term, n equals 1 for the first term, so you would plug in 2 times 1 and get 2, which is the first term right? If you wanted to find the fifth term, you would do n equals 5 for fifth term, and then you would do 2 times 5, which is 10. And we know that to be true because look, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, fifth term, all right? So we did it right. So our equation is, is correct. Okay, so now we're going to look at two example problems, and that is it for this video. All right, so it says find the common ratio, find a recursive equation, find an explicit equation, and then find the fifth term of the sequence. Cool, let's do it. All right, first off, uh, common ratio. All right, so that's going to be what we're adding or subtracting to go from one number to the next number. So one to five. The technique basically is you take... Uh, the like second term, you subtract the first term, that's your common difference. All right, so 5 minus 1 is 4. Then I would do 9 minus 5, that is also 4. Then I would do 13 minus 9, that is also 4. So the number that I have between each of my terms is 4, so D equals 4. That's my common difference. Now you probably didn't need to like write all of that out, you probably did that in your head, but I just wanted to give you guys like a visual of what you should be doing in your head in case you're confused. It's going to come into play a lot with number two because number two is a funky. It's weird. All right. So <laughs> there's our common ratio. So check. We've done that part. Now we want to make a recursive equation. So if you forgot what that looks like, you can slide on up. All right. So for recursive, a sub n equals a n minus 1 plus d. So really the only thing you're replacing to make the recursive equation is the d value. All right, a sub n stays where it's at. a sub n minus 1 stays where it's at because that's indicating you need the previous term. So the only thing we really can substitute is for d, our common difference. All right, so um, for that second part, so the recursive equation, so r for recursive, it's a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 4, which is our common difference. And that's it for the recursive equation. All right, explicit equation. All right, so that's the one that we just looked at. So let's scroll back up, look at this really quick. So it says you have a sub n equals a1, so you need the first term, plus d, the common difference, n minus 1. 
All right, so scroll back down, explicit, a sub n equals a1, which in our problem is 1, plus d, which is 4, times n minus 1. Now again, like I said, we do not leave it like this. We want to simplify. So to do that, we distribute. So we have a sub n equals 1 plus 4n minus 4, and then combine like terms. So 4n and then 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So this is our explicit equation. Hold on, I didn't even box it. D is 4, and then our recursive one is right there. All right, so we've done recursive, we've done explicit. Now we want to find the fifth term of the sequence. You could use uh, the recursive equation because we already know terms 1, 2, 3, and 4, so all we need is the next term. Um, I'm going to use the explicit equation. Uh, you could just add 4, right? This one's easy because the fifth term is just literally like the next term of the sequence. All right, so I'm going to do it like this. a sub 5 equals. All right, so I'm going to do 4 times n, which is 5, minus 3. So this is 20 minus 3, which is 17. And is 13 plus 4 17? Yes, it is. So I'm right. Okay, so that's a pretty basic standard um, uh a sequence, arithmetic sequence. Number two is also an arithmetic sequence, but it is a little bit more challenging because it's limits. Just because we are doing sequences does not mean that we aren't doing all function. Every function can be written as some type of sequence. So we have this for this number two. So here's number two. It's a little bit funky, but we can still do it. Okay, so just like in the first problem where I took the second term subtracted the first term. That's what I'm going to do here to find my common difference. So ln6 minus ln3. Now you need to remember a little bit about log properties for this. So with logs, if you're subtracting, that's actually division, right? This is ln of 6 divided by 3, which is 2, ln2. All right, let's look at, um, so ln12 minus ln6. All right, so we're subtracting ln12 minus ln6. Well, the same thing happens. Subtraction with logs becomes division. So you have 12 divided by 6. Well, guess what? That is also ln of 2. So my common difference is the natural log of 2. A little bit weird, right? Okay, so there's my common difference. Now I'm going to find my recursive equation. All right, this one's easy, right? Recursive equation is, is crazy easy. So a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus my common difference ln of 2. That's it. You're done. Bam. All right. But to make the explicit equation, that one's going to take a little bit more work on our part. So explicit. So a sub n equals a1, which is our first term, and that is ln of 3, I think, right? Yep, ln 3. I don't know why I decided to. I'm writing so big right now. I have no idea why. I got too excited, I guess. So ln 3 plus our common difference, so ln of 2 times n minus 1. Okay, now we need to simplify this, right? Remember, I said you can't just leave this like this. You have to simplify. So we need to remember a little bit of our log properties for this, all right? So if you are um, multiplying something to a log, it becomes an exponent. So we're right now multiplying n minus 1 to the log of 2. So this n minus 1 actually becomes the exponent of our logs. It's the same thing. Usually we have the number out front, right? So 3 ln of 2, we would say take the 3, make it an exponent. This is the same thing. Remember, multiplication is commutative. So you can write it in any order. So if we had n minus 1 times ln 2, we would take that and move it as an exponent. So it's the same thing. So the first step is to rewrite that exponent. So ln3 plus, this becomes ln2, and that gets an exponent of n minus 1. 
right? Now we are adding logs. So when you add two logs, that becomes multiplication. So our final step, a sub n equals ln of three times two to the n minus one. And that is our simplified equation for this sequence. Oops, I just did the box weird. There's our explicit equation. All right, so now we can find our fifth term. So a sub five equals ln of three times two to the fifth minus one. All right, so two to the fourth times three. All right, so what, two to the fourth, is that eight? <laughs> I'm like cheating, I have my calculator. 16, cool, so this becomes three times 16, which is 48, so it becomes ln of 48 is our fifth term. All right, now, if we go back up to our sequence, we can easily kind of check to see if that's right. So let's look at the pattern, right? So three, six, 12. So what it looks like we're doing is it looks like we're multiplying the numbers by um, two. So for the fourth term, we would have 12 times two, which is 24. So for the fifth term, um, we would have uh, 24 times two, which is 48. So ln of 48 makes sense. All right, so if you do it that way, it makes sense. But we, we did it with our um, explicit equation and we got 48 too. So it works out pretty fine. All right, that is the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. I know that log one probably gave you guys a hard time, but that's okay. That is what happens sometimes. And now we talked about it. So hopefully we're all good to go. All right, bye everyone.